Hey you guys and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to be making a video response to a survivor off of my private support group for survivors of narcissistic abuse. Every day I post a daily thread on there and survivors have, an, have um, the option of going down there and venting, sharing information, uplifting one another, asking me questions and such. And you know, when I get a question that I feel like could really benefit the whole community, I'll, you know, answer them, at least some of the answer um, under the thread, of course, but then I'll let them know, hey, I'm going to make a video and you'll get further insight there. Okay, so here we are to the video and let me read this young lady's statement under the thread. Okay, and she says, why is it so easy to regress? I was doing really well. Then I went full lurking meltdown, unblocked the narcissist and the new supply. I looked at everything that I could, and I haven't done that in months, and I hadn't even wanted to do that. The impulse was so strong. What is that? How can I stop? Help. I feel like I've taken a million steps backwards in my healing process. So, you know, a lot of times we're our own worst enemies and our own hardest critics, you guys. All right. And we do something and we just crucify ourselves for it. But let's let's talk about this. Number one, I want to let be let her read or ah, let her be reassured of knowing that it happens. It happens. Survivors do this. And sometimes they do this even when they're doing well in the healing process, you know, and this is what I was explaining to her under the thread. Hopefully, you know, these slips, they do happen. But when they do, I'm hoping that when you're looking back, that you're feeling less emotional, you're feeling less feelings behind this person as you look back, you know. And I'm not telling you to do it on purpose, but if you did it, let it be a measurement stick. Like it didn't hurt as bad, but, um, and she didn't say it did, but she just felt bad that she even did it. Okay. So I also shared a video for her to watch. And this is a video that I made January 5th, 2019. For those of you who are interested and it's called breaking the trauma bond for good. And then that video, um, and I do have other videos on the trauma bond, but in that particular video, I was talking about the scientific angle of things and how our brains work and um, why it's so easy for us to regress given that information. So I do and um, advise for you guys to watch that video and I'll link it to the end of this one. But I was just telling her my number one, this is going to sum that up, is we're more used to the old ways than the new ways. That is the most simplified way of putting it. But if you want to understand, like I said yet again, a little bit more deeply, please watch that video, Breaking the Trauma Bond for Good. Okay. If you don't want to find that playlist, if you search on YouTube, Breaking the Trauma Bond for Good, Reflection and Progression, it will pop right up. Okay. But yeah, we're more used to our old ways than our new ways. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how long she's been far removed from this relationship, but I'm quite sure it hasn't been years upon years upon years. You know, it hasn't been that long, honestly. And most survivors taken at least 12 months to 18 months to even get to a sweet spot in recovery. You know, not to not be still going back and looking per se. All right. But like I said, as you look back, while you're finding the healing, it will, you'll be less emotional, less affected by it. You know, the rosy colored glasses are getting further and further removed. The narcissist might not even look like what you, like, what did I even see in this person? Like, <laughs> you look at them again, it's like, what in the world? What type of days was I in when I fell for this knucklehead, you know? So it's so easy to regress yet again, like I said, because we're so used to, um, our old ways and our new ways, this new way of no contact and being separated from this toxic energy. We haven't been doing that for too long, have we? But how many times did we do the old way? A lot of times. So, you know, we're replacing one behavior with another, but for that to be cemented, yeah, keep the repetition up, of course, and, and keep 
planting seeds and watering our subconscious um, with these healthy ways of being, okay? That counter making this person look attractive in any shape, form, or fashion, all right? So the second thing that I have here, a reason why it's so easy to regress and why people are looking and lurking on the social media accounts, um, self-doubt. A lot of times at the end of that relationship, you're full of self-doubt because this person has been so inconsistent and they didn't reciprocate you. And then if you had a long string or history of this, it just becomes that much more stronger and potent in your life. And then now you're having this energy of self-doubt and you're looking on their social, me social media for confirmation. And the only thing you're going to be confirmed on is the illusions that they want to paint to the world and anybody outside of what's going on really behind a closed door with that supply. Okay. So being full of self-doubt and looking for confirmations in all the wrong places at that point. Okay. Number three, we want to, we want to see karma. You know, sometimes it's not really about connecting dots and getting information. Like, have they fallen on their face yet? <laughs> I want to see something bad. Did something bad happen to this narcissist yet? What can I find out? So, you know, we're snooping on to see if, you know, they're giving any information, if the new supply is passive aggressively showing signs of this and that. So we want to see signs of some karma. Mm -hmm. Sometimes... You know, and it's that stemming from that energy of revenge. So number four, sometimes we're looking for closure. You know, we're just looking for some type of closure. We're trying to connect the dots on things that, you know, we we want to know. So just really just looking for closure. That one is pretty self-explanatory. Number five, you guys, an idle mind is the devil's playground. So it could be boredom. So here we go, filling voids with this toxic energy because this is what we're exposing ourselves to, their toxic energy when we're going on their social medias, okay? So number six, you could have been triggered. You know, maybe a third party. Oh, girl, did you hear about da-da-da-da-da? Mm, oh, you know what? I see they posted this on the other day or you know maybe it's around the anniversary of the breakup or the anniversary of the relationship starting or you know anything that could trigger you to think about that toxic person and like well what are they up to anyway and here you are inspector gadgeting right on their website trying to figure this stuff out okay so number seven still trying to make sense of things all right um, still trying to make sense of things is different from finding closure, trying to find closure, and that's different from looking for karma. Still trying to make sense, you know, just confused about who the narcissist is, what they're doing, and what they did, and, you know, just trying to find whatever you can to help, you know, paint that picture in a way that will satisfy you in the mind frame that you are in at that time, okay? So number eight. You haven't taken the narcissist off the throne or the new supply. You may be idealizing them. You know, um, some of you are making them the end all be all, even though they were so horrible to you. Like that was the love of your life and all this other stuff. So, you know, this is a form of idealizing them. Instead of seeing how nasty and dirty and underhanded and con artisty they were, how they just took from you and you know, just negative. All right. Just negative, you guys. So that's definitely something that could be going on. So those are all the reasons that I shared with her. So these next one, two, three reasons are some additional ones, sweetie, that I want to give to you and everyone else in the community. All right. So number nine, um, this is a big dog. This is really big. Struggling with ideas of loss. You know, I've made videos on this channel and these two videos are under my motivational playlist for survivors of narcissistic abuse for the days that you're feeling down and out, don't want to get out of bed, feel like you're being swallowed by, you know, that sunken place and that dark energy. And um, 
One of them is called Losing the Narcissist is a Gain. And the other one is about cutting your losses, called Cut Your Loss. Okay, so if you're struggling with the idea of loss, a lot of times you are limiting your views on what loss represents to you in your mind. Okay, I want to invite you to have a higher consciousness, you guys, and to see things from a bigger picture. You know, all loss is not bad. If you were carrying around some extra weight that you needed to lose, if you lost it, should you be crying over that and upset? No. If you lose a disease, should you be crying and upset about that? No. The narcissist is like losing a disease because they're toxic and all that stress and everything that can cause this ease in your life as it did okay so struggling with the ideas of loss is this is for the people that are seeing the narcissist in some type of gain what were you really gaining by having this person in your life and that really needs to be fixed in your thinking because number one it's not even the truth that's not you're you're delusional at that point okay thinking that they were bringing something positive into your life other than uh a hard lesson that should have cost it or cost you to have a shift to bring you closer to yourself. Okay. They can be a catalyst for that, but you're struggling with ideas of loss is like, okay, cause you're not with them. It's the end all be all. Like they're the only woman in the world or the only man in the world. Okay. So we don't want to limit ourselves and have such a limiting view of loss. Sometimes we need to lose things because when we lose the things that don't serve us, it frees us up to have space for the things that do. So we can't just have these limiting views on loss <laughs> or I lost because they broke up with me. If a toxic person breaks up with me, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like, these are good things. These are good things, you guys. So, um, struggling with ideas of loss and having toxic, limiting perceptions and views on what a loss is. Like, look, I will take the loss of a narcissist. I need to lose narcissists out of my life. That's a wonderful, fabulous thing to get rid of such people. Okay. So some of you really need to work on that aspect. Number 10, um, we may have some types of questions like, have they changed? <laughs> some of us are looking back, have they changed? They're looking, again, they're trying to validate their shadow side that wants to hold on to the hope that the narcissist is not that nasty, dirty person that they showed. So they're like, have the narcissist changed? Um, does the new supply know now or did they break up too? So, you know, this is tying into um, the illusions and the manipulation and, you know, activating our shadow side at that point. All right. And not believing, want, not wanting to or having resistance to the truth at that point. All right. So the last thing that I have here on my list, and this is a big dog. This is a big dog, okay? We're reverting back and it's so easy to revert because we haven't broken the ties to them. We haven't fully broken them. You know, maybe it may be even holding on by a thread, but it's still a thread, you guys, that hasn't been broken. And these ties are typically the trauma bond and the soul ties, okay? Um, and these are creating strongholds in your life. And they're strong enough a stronghold would suggest they're strong enough to pull you back into that direction in some shape, form, or fashion. Okay? So um, breaking the trauma bond and the soul ties is something that, if there's a soul tie, okay? It's not always a soul tie, and it's not always in a romantic sense, okay? But um, breaking these bonds, these toxic bonds have to become like top priority you guys one of your top priorities is so essential to you being able to really release and move on with your life okay and on this channel i want to get more into um the spiritual aspects of it because that's what these are more than anything yes it's mental it's mental and um yeah, it's very mental, but the spiritual aspects of it, right? And I want you guys to be able to have some tools, you know, to be able to have a spiritual cleanse.
Some of you have never even done such a thing with yourselves, but maybe um, a will be, not a maybe, will be a necessary process here in helping you um, cleanse that energy and and your chakras and your aura of their energies, okay? And break these ties. All right, so this is why. This is why, you know, it's so easy to regress. And like I said, please watch my video, Breaking the Trauma Bond for Good, where I talk about the chemicals in the brain and how they operate when we get into toxic, abusive relationships and how that makes it easy for us to be able to regress later on. Okay. All right. I'm just reading through her statement to see if there's anything else um, that I would like to add. All right. Because I did talk about not being hard on yourself. All right. So how can you stop? Because we just talked about the reasons of why it's happening. How can you stop? We have to hold ourselves accountable, of course, and we have to start filling the voids. Um, usually it's something emotional that's dragging us there in the first place. So we can intercept it with our logic at that point. You could say, you know what, every time I want to look at this person's profile, I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to do that instead. Okay. And by the way, this is just a little plug. I do offer mobile text messaging. Um where you can text me instead of texting the narcissist. This is a great way to start no cut upon. Oh, Coastal Key, I want to reach out so bad. Coastal Key, I want to just look on their page so bad. Help me, girl. Say something. Give me something. <laughs> All right. If you go through my Patreon, that's a great way to uh, save money on that service. If you become a monthly um, contributor to the work that I do and, um, you will get that and then more. So it's $150 a month to unlock mobile texting to me for a um, monthly period. So it's a, you pay per month. And um, there's actually some other perks that come with that, including um, semi-annual coaching, either through voice or FaceTime, and some other perks actually. So if you're interested in that, you can't beat it um, on the website. It's kind of like being having a special membership that gives you more access to me on my Patreon than you would have otherwise. Okay. When you go through my website, it will cost more for these um, services. Okay. So I believe on my website, one day of texting is $150 as opposed to being a monthly contributor to the work that I do and pledging that $150 or more a month, then you can have that and network um, membership discount, okay? So that's just something that they're out there as a resource for someone who wants to intercept themselves with something positive, you know, so that they're not regressing there. And, and this will allow them to buffer themselves as they progress into the healing process and breaking these old ways. So we have to um, pl replace one behavior with another. You know, we can't just be idle. Well, I'm just going to say I'm not going to do it. Okay. But once you get that urge, you need to have something else that you can put in its place or else it'll be very easy and tempting to go ahead and regress at that point, okay? So I hope that this is helping that survivor and anyone else. If you guys want to give her or anyone else in the community any ideas with that, go ahead down in the comment section. Please hit the like button. Um, if this video has resonated with you, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Lots of content and video here. Take what you can to help you on your journey. I do offer coaching you guys through voice calls, FaceTimes, email coaching. And yeah, I do have the mobile texting support as well. You can find out about that on my website, LakiaCrawford.com. The link to Patreon is also there as well. The links to everything is down in the description as always, you guys. Just check the description. All right. And with that being said, don't be so hard on yourself. You know, of course, you want to challenge yourself to move out of that place and make them the non-factor that they are. But, you know, if you do look back and you're saying, you know what, I look back, but guess what? It doesn't, it's not striking my emotions anymore. 
Um, I'm not all of my feelings and, you know, it's not affecting me the way that it used to is actually showing you your progression and your ability to detach. Or man, I used to look at their profile every day and now I look at it once every few months. Now I looked at it every six months. Now I looked at it once a year and uh, now I don't even look, you know, sometimes, you know, it is a progression like that, but it's still a progression. So I don't want you to count it out that I've taken a million steps backwards because I look back because, you know, none of her message um, was saying that she was hurt or devastated. Da, 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 da. It was just saying, you know, I look back, you know, and sometimes curiosity does kill the cat. But in this case, you know, she's still standing, but she did look back. So, um, you know, get real with yourself and keep it real with yourself as to why. And when I gave her the first eight reasons, she was like, well, I could see how all of these kind of fit into why I was doing this. And, you know, how hopefully the other three could help you as well. And of course, you're welcome to seek out coaching as well. I do advise that to all um, survivors anyway, to go beyond just the YouTube videos, all right, and get more bang for your healing process and more completeness, actually, all right? With that being said, you guys, thank you for all your love and support. Never give up on yourself. Continue to do the work. And until next time, please take care.